Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. There's definitely a buzz here in the room at Care National. So I uh, just want to remind everybody that our next stream will be on October 20th. So be looking for that on the Hedis TV page. So, Steve, uh, do you want to introduce our special guest for the day? Absolutely, I do. Uh, we're glad to have a Hedis expert with us. Um, Kim Williams has 30 years of healthcare experience, including practice administration, HEDIS paper performance, um, and HEDIS project management, including building strong HEDIS teams and managing all aspects of HEDIS projects, uh, and private consulting. She's a certified professional in healthcare quality, uh, and she actually lives in uh, Kentucky. She's the proud mom of two amazing kids and a short hair, German short hair pointer named Coco. We gotta get that in. So, Kim, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I know people are, are dying to know some of the, the burning questions for the next uh, upcoming season. So we're just going to go right into that. Um, measure specification changes for 2018 HEDIS. What are, what are we looking for? I know you can't list them all, but what, what are some of the highlights? Oh, I, you know, Steve, if we listed them all, we would uh, we would have a, a couple of days. Um, I think one of the ones I'm personally the most excited about is the IMA change. Um, in 2017, um, they the MCQA moved the HPV immunization into the IMA measure. Uh, this year, we have a change where there is a two-shot series um, it went from a three-shot series to a two-shot series for um, for compliance, which is very exciting. So that that's just one of the ones that uh, kind of highlights for me that I think, uh, as a HEDIS geek, uh, really excited me. <laughs> she's a she's a HEDIS geek, Dave. Um, <laughs> We're all turning into that now, actually. <laughs> uh, another another quick question that came up here: uh, Do you see more compliance in hybrid data or administrative data? You know, as HEDIS professionals, I think we love administrative data. We love that compliance. It's right there. It's, it's cut and dry. Um, we have our hands on it. It, it is a, an immediate gratification in HEDIS. Um, the world of HEDIS comes from a hybrid data. There would be no need for uh, abstraction teams if, if there weren't hybrid data. Um, I absolutely believe uh, wholeheartedly that um, most of our compliance comes hidden in uh, that hybrid data, and that is um, my hats off to abstractors who have learned to be um, absolutely, you know, finding that needle in a haystack. Um, if, if procedures and diagnosis, um, if things aren't coded correctly, if a patient goes at the end of the year and we don't pick it up in that administrative grab, then we definitely have the chance for the hybrid data. So I'm a, I'm a firm believer in never give up and, and always collect that, that hybrid. <laughs> Wonderful. And Dave, we just got the, a question in from Facebook. Can you, yeah, uh, I got that. So uh, we have a question, Kim, that is kind of more in alignment with those that are looking to build teams. So Kayla online is asking, how do you build and keep a strong team of HEDIS professionals? I think that that is, is probably the most um, enormous undertaking because you find such incredibly talented people um, that have a wealth of HEDIS knowledge. Um, I think that you build and keep a strong team by keeping people engaged, um, by educating and training, um, also by having that open forum for input. Um, I think that everybody on the team brings a different strength. Um, you tap into that strength and, and you kind of shine a light on it. Um, teams are, are only as strong as, as the weakest link. Uh, so I believe fully in, in totally empowering um, my HEDIS team. I, I learn from them as well as they learn from me. So I, I think it's important to stay engaged in, in the HEDIS off season, um, keep everybody uh, in tip shape, um, what's going on, what's changing, what's the news look like, uh, what are the trends for the upcoming HEDIS season. Um, and, and always, always appreciate um, the, the strong members of your team because you don't have a strong team without them coming back. 
Kim, thank you for that, because I think that, you know, that advice translates well to building any team, honestly, not just a HEDIS team. So thank you. That's excellent advice. Yeah, here's a, here another question that had come in. Do you, is there any other additional advice that you could give uh, to nurses or other HEDIS professionals on what they can do to prepare for the upcoming season? I think uh, one of the uh, most enormous uh, amounts of preparation that we do is uh, staying tapped into the NCQA. Uh, read their updates, read the, you know, sometimes the technical uh, specifications are a little overwhelming. Um, look at, at some of the summaries for the updates, whether you are working commercial measures, you're, you're looking at the Medicare population or even the Medicaid population. Make sure that you, during that off season, you stay up to date um, and, and straight from the horse's mouth. Um, I, I have, um, an interesting perspective on on some things that that may not be correct. Um, I, I don't want someone else's opinion. I want what is is written and factual to to go on. Okay, uh, Michelle asks: uh, Has the heatus training for the new season begun, or will that start later as we get closer to the start of the season? For for my team, that starts later. Um, what we are in preparation for now is, is uh, making sure that we have every member of the team that we need. And then when we start our training, we start as, as he just begins and we train hard, fast, and, and you know, it's, it's a make or break situation um, during he just training because you're training as that, that data is, is coming in and you actually have enough work at the time that you're training to begin. So you train and start all, all in, in kind of a rapid sweep. Okay, fabulous, fabulous. We wanted to uh, give people an, a, a quick opportunity to, to go in and, and log some questions. If you go to facebook.com slash care national, uh, you'll be on our page and you can ask some questions there. We've got a few more minutes. Um, while we're waiting for a, a question or two, I just wanted to go through a couple of uh, items. Um, our next stream will actually be on October 20th, and the time will be determined later, but October 20th, mark your calendars, that will be coming up. And then also, this show right now will be rebroadcast about an hour from now, and it'll continue 24 hours a day for several days, so that if you've missed any part of it, you can certainly come back and, and circle back around with that. Um, one of the things that we wanted to, to talk about again, and I, I know this, we started about on the first part of the show to talk a little bit about, um, you know, employment opportunities. Um, Michelle, like for your team, I know you're you're recruiting now. We've actually started recruiting. Um, what are what are some specific things that uh, that people would need to do to get to get themselves out there and 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 make their their skills and HEDIS available? Kim, did you, did you hear that question? Yes. <laughs> I just I was just wanted to kind of talk about your your HEDIS team. I know you're starting to, to, to look at people right now. Um, yeah. I know that we are, you know, starting our recruiting process that will go right through December and and even beyond. Um, so we're we're encourage every everyone to on on our site to go to HEDISWork.com. At HEDISWork.com, you're going to find there a sample resume. You're going to find there a, a button where you can click and search our HEDIS jobs. A few minutes ago, we just uh, had a little mini commercial on several jobs. We already have HEDIS jobs available right now that we're recruiting for, yeah. and they'll just continue. We'll, I think I mentioned earlier that we'll most likely have over 100. Kim, you're, you're interviewing for your team, or you're starting to get your team in place. Why is it so important that you get your team in place right now? You know, Steve, there's um, a, a saturation at this time of, of the year as everybody is gearing up for um, for heat it, it's kind of uh, top now just looking at the top talent um, it is so important uh, of course to me my team is the research team so one of the requirements that I have before I bring somebody on board for research is that they've had at least years of experience 
Uh, abstraction is kind of most people get their foot in the door uh, with HEDIS. Abstraction is a, it, it's a skill. Um, it is a learned skill, and an abstractor that is uh, talented in HEDIS is a, a golden. They're, they're uh, amazing people. Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, it is not so much the speed of the work as it is the accuracy of their work. Um, I think there has been in the past such a push um, extractors to be so speedy that um, they, there was always that chance that they missed that, that fine detail. Um, I'm always a, a, a big advocate on I would rather someone abstract correctly, take their time, do it right, and, and then we can move from there. So one of my requirements is that two years of abstraction um, it is, you know, getting your foot in the door for HEDIS. Um, people in the, the field of nursing are not actually taught HEDIS. Coders are not taught HEDIS. HEDIS is a learned skill that comes after the fact. Um, yes, the, the, having that clinical experience is, is invaluable. Um, having that coding experience, even MA experience, is invaluable. But HEAT is definitely something that's learned after the fact. And if you are lucky enough to be a completely trained um, and, and trained well in HEAT, it, it will carry you very far. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, we did get another question from our website. Uh, I guess a little bit more of a technical question, but what what are the off-season interventions being used to impact rates? Um, I, you know, it's, it's funny, Steve, when we look at some of the, I, I don't know if, if we can term it an intervention. I think we look at where we've missed. Um, it just as an example, um, on the COL measure, um, in the off-season we look, um, where did we miss on those cold off-season? What can we do? Uh, as, what can they do at the provider level to increase those rates? Um, there are now some tests that are allowed to be sent home with the patient, um, where before that was that was not allowed. Um, they we are accepting those as, as compliant data now. So I think it's it's more examining where can we make compliance, where can we. At the provider level, are they reaching out to the patients that are missing on a CO level or cervical cancer? Are we doing, you know, tip communication? So that that kind of goes at, at the level of where the care begins, um, not so much on the fetus. Okay, perfect, perfect. Well, we just want to uh, we're going to uh, wrap up the the program here. We're about uh, just a minute or two away from from uh, 10 o'clock our time and uh, just wanted to thank everyone for joining. Uh, if, you, if you still have questions, keep them coming in. You can post them on our Facebook page, go, through, uh, go to hedis.tv, you can post them there as well. Uh, but we want more questions. We'd love to be able to fill those. We will post the uh, Q&A on our hedis.work.com uh, page. And again, we want to invite everyone to join us uh, on October 20th for our next stream. We will be sending out some emails and posting that information on our website. Uh, Dave, thanks for being here. I love it. Uh, I hope to hear from some of you out there. Keep in mind that we're all available. I know that my team here at Care National is available and open to any questions that you have, and hopefully we'll hear from you in some capacity in, in regards to the heat of season. And again, thank you for being a part of it. Kim, thank you as well so much for all of your expertise and your smile and everything this morning so it's been a fun experience and we look forward to hearing from everyone in the future thank Absolute. you so much it's going to be a great uh, 2018 season and uh, we look forward to being a great resource thanks again kim